So before anything else, let me introduce to the topical workbook for computer science 2210478. This is the workbook one for for paper one, basically computer systems. And as you can see from the table of contents, I've included questions on each and every subtopic from the syllabus, along with the mark scheme. And these are some of the actual questions, actual pages, uh, as a preview from the workbook. Section 1.1, 1.3, 2.2, 3.2, 3 5.3 Cybersecurity and Artificial Intelligence. This is just to show you a glimpse of what type of questions are included in the workbook. There are many, many, many more questions where these come from and around 18 to 20 questions on an average are included for each and every topic. A must buy if you want to boost your grade. Similar to the paper one workbook, I have designed a paper workbook for paper two as well. This is for algorithm programming and logic uh, for CIEs either 2210 or 0478 GCE or IGCSE computer science. As you can see, it contains questions on every subsection of the syllabus content for paper two along with the mark scheme so you can understand each and every question each and every um, algorithm these are some of the few pages from the workbook just to give you a glimpse of what type of questions are included as you can see this is 7.1 this is 7.7 8.3 and section 10 boolean logic so um, a lot more questions are included in the workbook a must buy if you want to have a very good score in your cambridge examination order now assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh i hope you guys are doing fine welcome to another physics lecture and today we would be starting a new topic that is uh, section number six the last section of physics slavers the space physics and today we would be discussing the section 6.1 earth and the solar system the earth earth is one of the planets revolving around our sun it has a nearly circular orbit around the sun which takes approximately 365 days to be completed so uh, as you know one earth year is equal to 365 days Earth has one natural satellite which is known as the moon. The motion of Earth and moon account for the occurrence of a number of natural events such as the change in seasons and the change from day to night and vice versa. The Earth's axis. The Earth rotates on its axis which is a line through the north and south pole. The axis is tilted at an angle of approximately 23.4 degrees from the vertical. So the earth is not exactly rotating in, um, on a straight axis. The axis is tilted slightly. Scientists have a theory about it that long ago when earth was young, it is thought that something big hit earth and knocked it off a bit something like an asteroid maybe so instead of rotating with its axis straight up and down it leans over a bit ever since then the earth completes one full rotation or a revolution in approximately 24 hours which is known as one day this rotation causes the phenomena of sun rising and setting uh, it is the earth which is rotating but due to its rotation it appears to us the people living on earth that the sun is actually rising in the sky and then setting in the east whereas actually the sun is in its fixed position and the earth is slightly till uh, rotating uh, around it the earth rotating on its axis is therefore responsible for the periodic cycle of day and night the Earth's rotation makes the sun looks like it moves from east to west. Day and night. Day is experienced by the half of the Earth's surface that is facing the sun, whereas night is the other half of the Earth's surface facing away from the sun. As you can see, this is the sun and the size of the side of the Earth, which is facing sun, experiences day, whereas the side of the earth that is away from the sun experiences night 
the earth's orbit the earth orbits the sun in approximately 365 days known as one year the combination of orbiting of the earth around the sun and the earth's tilt creates the seasons it takes approximately 500 seconds for light to reach from sun to earth you should remember this detail as it would likely be asked in the question paper as you can see as the earth when the earth is near to the sun we experience summer time when the earth is away we experience winter time see this is winter over here this is is uh, when the earth is at medium distance then we either have spring or autumn uh, then when the earth is further away we experience winter whereas the side facing the sun experiences summer so the movement of earth around the sun basically creates four different seasons at the same time half of the earth experiences a different season and the other hemisphere or the other half experiences a slightly different season this is due to the tilt of the earth as you can see the earth's axis is tilted and not really straight the moon and the earth the moon displays eight phases one after the other as it moves through its cycle each month it takes about 27.3 days for the moon to orbit the earth however because of how sunlight hits the moon it takes about 29.5 days to go from one new moon to another new moon so you can say that uh, whereas in reality a month should have been just 27.3 days it is uh, since we cannot see a full moon for another uh, uh, sorry not a full moon a new moon for another two and a half days so it uh, is rather something uh, one month according to the lunar calendar would be something like 29.5 days the moon revolves around its own axis in a month so all it always has the same side facing the earth from the earth while standing on the earth we have actually never seen the other side of the moon uh, uh, some space probes has captured the image of the other side of the moon and have sent it to the earth otherwise nobody standing from the earth has ever seen the other side of the moon because of uh, the rotation of moon on its axis it is always locked in such a situation that always the same side faces towards the earth the moon does not have its own light it rather reflects the light from the sun the eight moon phases this is known as a new moon when we cannot really see the moon as uh, it is not reflecting any light by the sun then slightly in the northern hemisphere we see the waxing crescent phase and it appears as a very thin crescent of light on the ring uh, on the right side of the moon then comes the next phase which is known as the first quarter whereas the uh, right half of the moon is uh, visible and the right half of the moon is uh, glowing or reflecting sun's light whereas the left half is uh, dark as it is not in the current position uh, in the correct position to reflect uh, sun's light more than that then we have the waxing gibbous the waxing gibbous is between a half moon and a full moon and waxing means it is getting bigger so basically uh, almost three-fourths of the moon is covered and only a slight crescent is left on the left side full moon we can see the moon completely illuminated during full moons then we have the vanning gibbous the vanning gibbous phase is between a full moon and a half moon vanning means it is getting smaller then we have the third quarter which is an uh, and opposite of the first quarter over here the right half of the moon is not visible or it is dark whereas the left half is illuminated last phase we have is the waning crescent means the crescent is slowly disappearing 
it is the waning crescent uh, when you only have a thin crescent on the left side of the moon and uh, this is an illustration to show you how the moon keeps on rotating around the earth which causes different phases of the moon the moon is between the sun and the earth that means it cannot reflect light so it is the new moon the moon is slightly on the side so it can reflect some of the light that means the waxing crescent then we have it is uh, aligned with the earth that means our first quarter it is slightly uh, ahead of sli it is uh, sl slightly uh, you, it is not exactly in the middle of th the earth or on the uh, on top of the um, uh, northern hemisphere uh, but it is on its way over there in such a phase the moon reflects most of the sun's light which is known as waxing gibbous then we have the moon is exactly on the north pole sorry south pole and that means it is a full moon as it can completely um, reflect the sun's light then again the moon keeps on rotating and it produces waning gibbous then the last quarter and then the waning crescent and ultimately the moon g returns to its original position creating the new moon now from here this position of the moon to moving till here it takes around uh, two days hence from one new moon to another new moon it takes approximately around 29.5 days orbital speed the orbital speed of an object is the speed at which it orbits around a star or the body center of a system uh, usually it is uh, the center of a very massive object or it is the center of a star orbits of planet around sun or a moon around its planet are usually circular in shape this establishes that if you take the distance between a planet and the sun as the radius the total distance traveled by that planet in one complete rotation would be equal to the circumference of that uh, circle as you know speed is equals to distance over time this means that average orbital speed can be written as for the distance we can use the formula of the uh, circumference of a circle that is 2 pi r and a time would obviously be the time taken to complete one rotation and uh, when you plug the values in this formula you get v that would be the orbital speed in meters per second r would be the average radius in meters taken from the center of object to the center of um, object being orbited means the from the from the center of the planet till the center of the star or the sun or from the center of the moon to the center of the planet or the, the center of the earth time is written in seconds it has to be written in seconds so if you are given time in any other unit you have to convert it and this would be the total time it takes to complete a one orbit remember this formula as it is explicitly mentioned in the syllabus so it is going to be very important for solving questions from chapter number six next let, let's have a look at some example questions for this part of six six point one state the time taken for light to travel from sun to earth and then the answer is obvious 500 seconds or if you want to write it in minutes that would be something like 8.3 minutes using your answer to e1 calculate the distance from sun to earth this part now if you know the total time taken just put it in the formula distance equals to speed into time and you know the speed of light as well that is 3.0 into 10 to power 8 multiply this with pers uh, multiply this this is the speed of light per second in meters then multiply it with the amount of time that is 500 seconds and you get your answer as 1.5 into 10 to power 11 meters 
a year a month and a day can be defined in terms of the motion of the earth the moon and the sun using these motions complete the following sentences a year is the time for obviously the time that it takes the earth to complete one rotation around the earth uh, sorry around the sun or the the time for the earth to travel around the sun a month is the time for the moon to travel around the earth or complete one rotation around the earth a day is the time for the earth to rotate uh, once on its own axis or the earth to complete uh, one rotation earth jupiter and saturn are three planets in the solar system table 2.1 gives information about these planets using data from this table calculate the average radius of saturn's orbit around the sun now uh, over here you're given orbital speed and you're given the time it takes in years for saturn to move around the sun we are going to use these two values we are going to as we uh, read above the formula for uh, is uh, the formula for average orbital speed is supposed to be v equals to 2 pi r over time over here we know the orbital speed and we know the time in years we'll just convert it into seconds we'll plug in the values in the formula and we'll um, cross will just simply shuffle the values to calculate the uh, uh, value for r or the radius or if you want you can simply use the distance equals to speed into time formula that kind of would work the same as well so um we plug in the values we multiply them and we get 1.4 into 10 to power 9 kilometers when you're talking about the radius between a planet and a, and its star or the sun it's better to use kilometers as if you would be writing the answer in meters that would be a really uh, big number so it's better to use a standard form and use kilometers okay so 6.1 is still remaining but uh, i would uh, the lecture would be prolonged by quite a bit so i would be concluding this part 1 of 6.1 over here i hope you have understood everything if you have any questions feel free to ask and do leave comments i'll make sure to reply them if you have any queries uh, otherwise just let me know in the comments how what you think about this lecture i hope it was helpful to you take care i'll see you guys in the next lecture Allah Hafiz